Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of The Ultimate Iron Man. That is my first time saying that in over two months because the Trailblazer League, as I'm recording this, just ended last night and I've only been making Trailblazer videos for two months now, so it feels good to be back on the UIM. Literally just stopped AFKing like 10 minutes ago after two months of only AFKing this account, and uh, it's time to move on, time to actually play this account again. As you can see by the trophy I'm holding, we did end up getting Dragon Cup. I just made this outfit real quick just because it looks cool, so I just wanted to like show that in the video, but I'm gonna put all these outfits and stuff away, the Infernal Axe back in the stash unit and all that good stuff. Um, because I want to open all these caskets. Oh, I have to use up all these seeds too. I guess we're done with this, we're done with that, that. Yeah, I need to free up some inventory spots so we have some inventory space to work with so we can open all the caskets. Okay, here's a fun way to start off the video by getting a farming level. This has been building up for the last few months because I was planting all the seeds as I got them from all the seed nests, and there's level 97. Oh, we're getting so close to 2.2k total level as well. It's freaking sick. You don't understand. Every level I get at this point is like such a big deal because I pretty much never get levels on this account at this point. Yo, how much GP do we have? We have that. <laughs> I thought it was like 140 mil. All right. Um, you know, I haven't been here for a very long time. I'm putting all the money into Nightmare Zone because I just want to see how much money we get from alking all the items that we get from these clues. I swear there's been like a few new collection log slots they've added in the last couple of months that I wasn't playing this account. So I'm just going to go through all the things in here. So that way Runelite can update the things that I have in here as well as the new things that they added. Oh yeah, they added uh, a couple new pieces of Castle Wars armor for like all the sets. So I mean, at some point I'll probably do Castle Wars probably. Oh yeah, Soul Wars, that was just added today. Probably head over there at some point too. Not today, but eventually. Oh, the Beekeeper outfit. They added that while I was playing the League. So whenever you get Beekeeper randoms, I actually need to do them now. Apparently they made the actual events a lot easier as well, so that shouldn't be an issue. And it looks like we are at 600 collection log slots filled out. 600 exactly. That looks really nice. Even like the last few weeks I was playing this account, I didn't really update the collection log. Um, I'm sure once we open up these clues, we'll probably hopefully get more slots filled out. We only need three more items for the beginner collection log, um, but we actually need more than that in here because these rune scimitars weren't originally storable in the POH, so now we have to get both of these and those two as well. So hopefully we can see something new today. Dozens and dozens of hours of woodcutting and fishing have led up to this point, the point where we open the caskets. Let me just double check the loot tracker, make sure it's tracking it properly. Oh, I should reset that. Okay. All right, let's start opening now. Yo, hey, that's the one we needed, the sandwich lady top. Oh, yes. Okay, we got something new at least. I'm happy about that. All right, we're almost done. One more. Here we go, all done. Up to 228 beginners, so somewhere in there we hit 200. Uh, the explorer mode, uh, we eventually have to get, I think it's, yeah, 600 beginners, so I wanna get that eventually. I wanna get everything eventually, but that's just one thing right there. So Jagex did something really weird when they reworked the costume room. All the beginner clue items were all individually storable, but after the update, they made certain things into sets that weren't sets before. So once they did that, I was not able to withdraw this outfit because as a UIM, you have to have the full set in order to withdraw draw it. But now we have the full set, so I am reunited with the Sandwich Lady outfit. Now this time, we have the whole thing. <laughs> now I just gotta get the sale that I get to complete the outfit. UIMs also cannot store duplicates of items. Only one, that's what we voted on. And here's a little price check of these items before I drop them over to the main. I mean, for free-to-play, I feel like if you're free-to-play, that's like a pretty hefty chunk of money. You know, for some reason, I thought we already had the 500 easy clues done, but apparently not. Oh, it must have been mediums. Yeah, we got the 400 mediums done. We didn't get 500 easies, though. So with these easies, we will reach 500 easy clues completed and get the giant spade, I think. Yeah. Okay, we'll open one. Uh, we do have all the god books done. But let's just double check this thing here. Let's reset that. Because we have so many easy clues done already, I have no idea what we have and don't have. Um, but because of the costume update, we can individually store items now. But like I said before, we just can't take them out until we have the full set. Elegance really rare, so that's probably a new item. Yeah, okay, we deposit that, and then is that new? That's also new. And when I say new, it could already be in the collection log, um, but because it wasn't storable before, it's new in here, not new for the log. I mean, it could be, but I don't know. Oh! 
a gold apron. Oh, it's so cool. I don't think that's like extra rare than other items, but like that looks freaking sick, dude. Look at that. Hey. Most uniques from Easy's are one out of about 1.4k per roll, except for certain things like the elegant and then there's the golden uh, items. Those are about double the rate, one out of 2.8k-ish. Let's keep going. We got a lot of uniques from that opening, so we didn't have that one. Iron Plate Body T, we didn't have that one. Iron Kite Shield T, we didn't have that one. Uh, Iron Kite Shield G, we have that one. I think it's the full set that I got. And then Bandos Rope Top. It'd be really cool to finish a vestment set eventually. So I guess we're working on building that set then. Yeah, you need a lot of items to finish one of these sets. Every time that happens where I get like the extra item, I'm just like, wait, what is that for a second? But yeah, that's the giant spade or the large spade. That is guaranteed when you finish 500 easy clues. And then after that, if you ever drop it, all you have to do is one more easy clue and then you're guaranteed to get it back. Okay, seeing me where this reminded me of something, I just couldn't put my finger in it, but now I just remembered. It was from Twisted League. I had a very similar outfit. I got the golden apron, as you can see right here, and then I wore it in a few more thumbnails, especially this one right here. You see that the golden apron with the giant spade and then there's me just flexing that golden apron a couple more times okay and the last four easy caskets to open up maybe that's new can we see something new perhaps perhaps let's see is the shield new no body yes and then the skirt also new Cool. Let's drop the rest of this stuff over to the main then. Just going to reset the loot tracker in advance, but we got all these freaking items from Trailblazer League because there's like a three times drop rate, but there's so much freaking stuff. I finished so many sets and got so many like boots and all these other things I really want to get on the UIM. I got kind of triggered. I got the full, uh, the, the black dehyde gold trim set as well, which kind of salty that I got that on the league, but not on the UIM, but hey. You still got some chances today to finish that. Anyways, onto the medium clues now. Still no rangers. I've been holding on to the Pegasian Crystal for a very long time. Uh, okay, let me just double check this. Okay, cool. All right. <laughs> okay, three more chances. One more. Sad. My buddy Nam might be watching this right now. I'm very sorry. I'm dropping those. Okay, let's see what new items we got today from this medium clue opening. And there's a shield that we had already. Blessing that we didn't have already. I'm pretty sure we have that. Yeah, have the skirt. Zamrat cloak. Had that. Ancient soul. Probably new. No. Armadale stole. New. Yes. Cool. Something new at least. This is, I think, yeah, I had that. Crier bell. Oh, Crier bell. We had that already. Oh, apparently that peaceful blessing we just got was the last one that we needed to complete the set. So now we have all six of them. We have five hard clues and one elite clue. I'm actually going to open the elite first because like the elites aren't as good as hards in terms of like loot that's actually useful for the account. So we'll start with the elite. Another peaceful blessing. I don't know why I was like really expecting a mimic. Okay. Now the fun part, we have five hard clues. Probably the biggest thing I'd like to get is any blessed dehyde that I don't have already. Preferably Zami or Sarah. Here we go though. Okay. That, that's, that's the one I had. Thank you though. It was a nice attempt. <laughs> The one that I already have that I've been holding on to since like pretty much the start of this account for over a year now. That's the one god dehyde I've always kept in my loom bag. Okay. Alright, one more. Alright. <laughs> Done with the whole clue opening now too. At least we got some good alks though. The large spade's pretty cool. It's kind of like holding a god sword. The cape just flows in the wind. Um, I'm pretty sure we can store that. In there. Nice. And then the golden apron. I'm pretty sure it's new, right? Yeah. And then Sarah stole. Okay. It's also new. Okay. That wasn't too bad then. Also, I swear like every other time I enter the POH, my pet just gets stuck in that pool. Wait, let's try again. Here, go into the POH. Wait, is it every time the pet just gets stuck in there? I think that only started happening after I uh, made like the ornament kit thing. On there. Oh, maybe not every time. I'm going to drop this stuff over to the main, including the blue party hat. I was saving that in case we got Sagacious Spectacles from the Clue Scroll, which we did not get, so 
is going over to the main. And I mean, I guess I can put this into the costume room because I can still like leave this in here. And then if I ever want to drop the one I have on me, I can just go ahead and drop that. So now we at least have this in here for safekeeping. It looks like all the GP that we got from Alking Everything gave us almost 400k and then let me update the collection log, we'll uh, go through all these tabs. And we're now up to 607 slots, 7 new items today, well new for the collection log, possibly even more than that uh, that we were able to store into the POH. Apparently I just can't stay away from here, we're uh, going back to the AFK tonight while I eat dinner and edit the video and all that good stuff. We are uh, back to the tea trees, gonna get some more woodcutting XP and I guess more crystal shards too. Here's a before and after of the clue scroll high score. So here's before and here's after. So we moved up uh, a bunch of beginner ranks, 156 before and now into double digits. Same for the medium clues, we were in triple digits and now we are in double digits. Um, so yeah, you pause you want before or after. Okay, well I guess the clues didn't reset properly because it's showing like a bunch of the mediums from Trailblazer, but yeah, if you wanna, oh, it's kind of accurate. All right, fresh new day. And starting today, I am about to have a pretty uh, rough time on RuneScape, we'll just say that. But first, the calm before the storm. A nice farm run. I like having a dragon fruit tree planted here because just like right now, when I get a redwood seed, I can actually use those dragon fruits to pay for the redwood tree because very conveniently, you need six dragon fruits to pay for it. We got a few more clues done while woodcutting last night. So let's open those up. Is that, I don't know if that's the one we had stored or not. Uh, we'll find out in a minute though. And then two mediums, one more chance. All right, that is not one we had already. So I bought the Rune Scimitar for 38.4k GP, attached the ornament kit on there, and then we can put it into the treasure chest. Wait, is that the one we were missing on the collection log? No, it's not. We have three of that one and four of that one. I mentioned this last video as well. What we're gonna be doing for, I don't know, it could be anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours to days, weeks, who knows how long. Um, what we're gonna be doing is gonna be very stressful, and that is gonna be going for the Earth Warrior Champion Scroll. For those of you who don't know about UYM Death Mechanics, well, first off, I don't have a bank, so all my items are always on me, unless I keep stuff at, like, Hispori, in which case, if you die anywhere else in the game while your stuff is at Hispori or Zora, for example, it's deleted from there. So I can't leave it in there while I go into the Wildy. I have to leave it on the ground. Uh, if you get PK'd and you have items on the ground, they still stay there no matter what. They retain their original one-hour death timer no matter what happens. You can die to a PKer, you can die to a PVM death, you can hop worlds. Your items will still always retain that original one hour death timer on the ground. For UIM, all other accounts have gravestones. However, if you log off or unfortunately if you DC or your computer crashes, that one hour timer is still counting down. Um, you can have multiple death piles as well and each pile will still retain their original one hour timer. I'm not going to have the construction cape on me so I'm going to like have these house teleports. You'll kind of see how it works once we get all set up to do this. But first, I have to get all my items back from Espori, get a looting bag, put it all in there, and then we can begin. Wait, apparently I have an easy casket. Okay. It's so weird. I haven't been here in such a long time, dude. It's been over two months. I guess I have these herbs from Calphite Queen that I have to clean first. Everything is all collected from Arno. It's all sorted out. Allegedly, this interface is now supposed to work properly because before the death mechanic changes a few months ago, this thing was like always broken, but you can like adjust it to whatever you want now. Supposedly, stuff like Dragon Defender, uh, let me grab more stuff out the POH. Yeah, so Defender, Void, Torso, supposedly it's kept on death, but I don't know if I trust this interface for UIM. By the way, UIMs do not ever save any items on death, and the Protect Item Prayer for UIM does absolutely nothing, so everything is supposed to be lost on death. But because of the change to death mechanics, I'm not really sure how it works now, and I don't know of anyone that's tested it, like specifically gone out and like PK themselves to see if they kept their items. For the last week, I've been obsessing over the calculations for Earth Warriors because it's just been so like stressful on my mind because it's not gonna be a fun time. I've tried so many different combinations with different kinds of potions, different kinds of prayers, tradable items, untradable items. Also learned some interesting things about what affects the DPS and what doesn't affect DPS sometimes and some items are better that wouldn't normally be better sometimes. It's kind of hard to explain without messing around with the calculator yourself. I've discovered that Void would be better, but I don't know if I want to risk potentially losing if I get PK'd. 
and even if it does drop to the ground, PKers could camp that spot and prevent me from getting back. Like every time I try to go there, they just keep PKing me over and over until one hour is over and I lose my void or whatever untradeables I have. So I don't know if I actually want to risk some of these untradeables. And the last thing we have to buy to complete the outfit is the Dragon Scimitar for 100k, which is going to be the biggest thing that we're risking. Nothing else is really that expensive to get back. I mean, even the Dragon Scimitar for me is that expensive, but it's just the most expensive. I'm going to make all the items that I have on me purple. So that way when I die every 45 minutes, it'll be easier to see which items I need to pick up from the ground. Well, this update just popped up right now. Um, the last thing we have to do is change the respawn point back to Edgeville. This is going to be very, very useful to respawn in Edgeville because that's going to be super close to where the Earth Warriors are. And I did already pay 5 mil for this a long time ago. For any of you that play UIM, uh, whenever you're about to die, like especially on purpose with your items on the ground, I would very, very highly recommend having a plan written out, just like I have here. And also, always mark your world. Make sure you mod mark what world you're on because, for those of you that don't know, um, for regular accounts, your gravestone appears on all worlds, but for UIMs, your death pile will only be on the world that you died. Every second is very important when your items are on the ground, and you don't want to get complacent, which I'm very scared of happening because of the fact that we might be here for like 50 or 100 hours or something. I'm very, very terrified of getting complacent, and then we go to like one hour and five minutes, and I forget my items are here, and they all despawn. That is a nightmare for me. I'm going to try my best to not allow that to happen. But yeah, locator orb is super nice because we can just go straight down to one hit point and then pick the nettles and then just immediately die. Oh yeah, and items never appear for anyone else when you die on UYM. Well, that's why they originally made the one hour death timer because people were DDoSing each other to get their items. So these items will only ever be visible to me. I'll be using my own timer because I think Runelite might have a built-in one, but I don't know if I really trust it. Plus it's better to have like a, an offline one. Here we go though, the beginning of a very fun time. Yeah, there's all the purple items too, so that'll be really nice to just pick those up right away. And now this is why I got the runes, so that way we can teleport home. We'll take 1k GP out of the servant's money bag, then take the mounted strength cape over to the warrior's guild. Using menu entry swapper on rune light, you can configure your shift click, so that way you can just do it like that. I bought three of each potion, I'm gonna drink those two doses right there, the leftover doses, and then buy cheesy potatoes. I guess hop one more world and buy more cheesy potatoes. And we're gonna teleport back home, take the Mounted Glory over to Edgeville, and because I'm in a different world, the items are not going to be there on the ground. That's okay, they're still on the original world. I actually got this plugin from the plugin hub, and it showed a UIM helmet on the plugin. Um, so this is actually really convenient. It looks like it is actually working, but I'm still going to be running my own timer too, just in case you never know what could happen. And then once we get to the gate here, I'm just going to hop worlds again because um, you don't know who saw me out there and who you know, could potentially be following me. It's not a big deal if I die, it's just a waste of time. Oh, dude, these bots are gonna make me so paranoid. There's like bots in almost every world either running across the monkey bars here or picking up the red spider's eggs. Oh, I gotta turn the Runelite plugin on that shows, uh, that shows the people's names over their heads. Here we go though, the first Earth Warrior kill on the account. Imagine we just get first kill. I don't think I've ever actually killed an Earth Warrior on the account. Oh yeah, we get the Loon back too, which will be nice. We'll have to worry about that like after the end of each session. Yeah, it's called the Player Indicator plugin. And just to double check, it looks like the Loot Tracker is reset, so we're all good to go to see how many Earth Warriors. Oh, actually, they don't always drop something, do they? So it won't even be completely accurate. When the monster doesn't drop an item, it doesn't show up on the loot tracker. With the gear I have and my DPS, apparently my expected seconds to kill each one is about 14 seconds, so about four Earth Warriors per minute. If a PKer comes, um, I'll have more time to react and teleport out because it's single weight combat here, so they can't attack me if I'm attacking an Earth Warrior. Also, I'm very glad that I'm like barely taking any damage. I was worried that I'd be taking a bit more damage than this and actually go through my food here. But looks like, assuming I don't get PK'd, this should be way more than enough food that I'll need for the Earth Warriors. Oh, I know what I could do. I could like reset the strength and hit point XP and stuff and then divide the- Yes, that that's how we can keep track of the Earth Warriors. First I have to actually like get to a safe spot over here. Oh, there's someone else here. Hmm. Oh, dude, I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna be so paranoid here. I don't know who's a scout or who's just here for like a Slayer task or something. Oh no, it's terrifying. Yo, remember that Soul Wars hotfix I just showed not too long ago? Um, I was actually just reading it now, and they said that UIMs can now use or bring in their looting bags into Soul Wars. That's actually I me mean, really nice. That was kind of one of the reasons why I was kind of hesitant to do it anytime soon, but makes me kind of want to do it now. That's how it is for Castle Wars and Barb Assault too. You can't bring looting bags into there, but at least you can bring them into Soul Wars now. All right, it's been about 50 minutes, so we have about 10 minutes left. I'd say this is probably a good time to go and reset all the items, so we're gonna go teleport home, and we have to hop back to the world as well. Once we hop back, all the items are gonna be here, 
And the first time we die, there's only going to be one death pile like right at the start of the session. But after the first trip, we have to make two death piles because we can't pick all this up at once. I just had the looting bag already at the start. I have to be very certain though to make sure to pick up the locator orb each time though. So we're going to pick the nettles and then we're going to die again. We reset the timers. Okay, and then reset this timer as well. However, it doesn't keep track of multiple death piles uh, once I die here. It should reset the timer, right? So I have to remember that there's actually like one less minute than there really is on there. And now we can pick up all these items and go do it all over again. I just did the math to figure out how many Earth Warriors we killed in that first hour. And it was exactly 200. It could be 198 or 199 because of the health regen possibly, but um, I guess we'll assume over the long term, it'll be a little bit under 200 kills per hour. I'm gonna count that as a full hour though, because we still have to include like the time running here and then the time resetting everything. So that means there'll be about 25 hours to meet the drop rate. And uh, I don't think there's really much more to check in with. So I'll just be spending all day, every day doing the exact process you just saw me do over and over every 45 to 50 minutes. All right, goodbye. Oh, what a spooky ghost. I'm just so paranoid. I feel like everyone's a scout for everyone. <laughs> I don't know if I should hop or not. All right, little check in here because we just hit a bit of a milestone, 350 million total XP. And I just did the math to check the KC that we're at now. It's a little bit over 1500, getting close to 1600. So been here for almost eight hours so far today. And uh, all I'm gonna say before I uh, sign off again is this is very unfun. This is so wholesome, dude. All I see here is peers, probably like maybe a couple times per hour, I see a peer login, and then half the time they're like, love the vids, which is surprising because I didn't think people that are into peaking would be the same kind of people to watch Iron Man videos, but I appreciate it, it's very sweet. 30 seconds later, a max main with full mage gear just wrecks me. Man, I keep telling myself, just one more kill, just one more kill, but you know, I gotta cut it off at some point. Um, so there's the hit points XP that we gained today. Uh, I'll probably just leave this up for like the whole entire time that we're doing this. But if you want to figure out at any point how many kills we've done so far, just take that number and divide it by 72. So today we've done a little bit over 2300 Earth Warrior kills, which is like 11 to 12 hours of being down there camping them with all my items on the ground. This is terrifying, man. This is actually terrifying. All it takes is one untimely DC or a couple hours for the ISP to go down or my phone to not work or I don't know, dude. I've, I've come up with like the worst scenarios in my head and it's terrifying. I gotta stop thinking about it. It just sucks like doing this all day long because I can't really take breaks. I mean, I guess I could suicide the items and then go do something, but like just being away from the computer is just a really scary feeling. If I want to like pick up my items and organize them and like have everything in my inventory, like, like I'm doing right now, I have to waste 15 minutes doing that each time. So it's not very convenient for me to take breaks over and over throughout the day like I normally do. And because of that, like I said before, this is very unfun. On one hand, it feels really good to have all my items back on me and in the bag. But on the other hand, it's really depressing now. I have to keep on doing the whole thing I did today over and over and over again for who knows how long. But for now, I gotta eat dinner and I definitely don't want to be in the wildy with all my items on the ground while I'm chilling AFKing and eating dinner. So I'm gonna plant this torso seed, which is a really, really rare drop from Earth Warriors, which I don't want to get into. And wallow in my sorrow while I chop, should I just chop teaks? Probably just chop teaks again tonight. After a nice, long, relaxing night of AFKing at the teaks, it's time for day two of Earth Warriors. Oh, yes. Oh, dude. Yes. That was like the second kill this trip as well. We actually got lucky. <laughs> we actually got lucky, dude. You can see I literally just like redid my items. I was actually expecting to be here for like a full week or something. I'm so glad we got that, dude. Okay, so based on the hit points XP, divide that by 72. Uh, it's about 3350-ish or so, uh, KC for the Earth Warrior scroll, so. Always lucky, man. Also means it was about 16 hours of being at the Earth Warriors with all my items on the ground, so very nice to have that stressful situation done. Uh, before anything else, though, like I assume this would fall to the ground and like stay there for an hour if I die, but just to be on the safe side and because we have plenty of time left, uh, we're just going to go and use the Earth Warrior Champion Scroll right now. Each champion fight has a special rule, and I believe the rule for this one is you can't use your prayers at all. Yeah, okay. These fights are super easy, it's not a struggle at all, and if you're doing this yourself on like a regular account or an account that can bank and you want to save the scroll, make sure you drop it on the ground before you kill the champion, otherwise it'll disappear when you kill it. But if you drop it, then you could pick it back up right now. I'm actually so relieved to have that. Look at that beautiful wall. We only have two more to go, which I'm not in a rush for. 
Uh, it's the giant one and the lesser demon one. I think I'll probably just casually do those because both those are really AFK. I can just put on my proselyte anytime and just AFK in the catacombs. So we'll uh, we'll go for those last two scrolls over time. Probably won't grind them straight out though. All right, goodbye champion scroll message. Gonna go uh, pick up all the items off the ground and put it all into the bag and get everything all sorted out and relaxed and uh, we'll figure out what to do next. Yes, goodbye dragon scimitar. Goodbye amulet of strength. Goodbye rune gloves. We can move on. All right, uh, we got some seeds to use up, so maybe I should probably start planting these right now before I start talking. Oh yeah, as we're doing this, uh, I can show you the loot tracker here. Uh, there's the Earth Warrior Champion scroll. Like I was saying before though, it didn't track every kill because when you don't get a drop, it doesn't show up on the loot tracker. But from the Earth Warriors that did drop something, this is what we got. It's so weird. I keep expecting everything to be like how it was in Trailblazer, like when I harvest the herbs. It's supposed to be two. Why am I only getting one? Game's so difficult, man. Where's my fat XP drops at? And as for the XP we gained, it was about 240k hit points XP, and then the strength XP was about 725k. Man, 3300 Earth Warriors. That's, uh, that's not bad, that is not bad, that is, that is pretty lucky. <laughs> as I said before, I did see a couple PKers per hour, but no one within my combat range at all the whole time. No one attacked me. Um, it was just pures. It's always scary, like, seeing your whole account on the ground, but it's not really your whole account because even when you do wipe on the UIM, you still have your stats, diaries, quests. As I like to say a lot, UIM to me is constantly taking two steps forward and one step back. And another big part of UIM is accepting that items aren't necessarily permanent. Well, except for the things that you can store. I guess nowadays especially, there's a lot more items becoming more and more storable, like in the POH and stuff. But with that being said though, let's move on from the Earth Warriors. And uh, RuneScape is 20 years old, and there's the 20 year anniversary event, which we start uh, right here, I think. In the Yeah, there's the Gnome Child. Start right here in the Wizard's Tower. I can't believe it, man. That's, that's crazy, 20 years. The game might be older than some of you watching the video right now. The reason why this gnome is green is because when runescape first came out this was originally what they looked like or they originally green like that no way we both got the gnome child pet that's crazy gosh i feel so lucky to be able to do this holiday event with my favorite youtuber spook dog every city is like this right now Oh wait, it says happy anniversary there, but this way doesn't say it. All the cities are decorated like that and it's great. It just, it really gets you in like the mood. I mean, not that kind of mood, like the feeling. The holiday spirit, even though the holidays are over, but not the RuneScape holidays, because we got this event and then the, ooh, nice. And then the old school anniversary is coming up as well. Such a well-written event though. I know by the time you're seeing this video, the event's probably gone, but I hope you took the time to read all the dialogue because there's a really well-made dialogue here. This is great. Okay, then this should be the end of the event and we get all these items. Whoa, look at all that. I didn't have enough inventory space, so some of it went to Diango, but I haven't even like looked at uh, what the rewards are. So yeah, it was this Gnome Child mask. That is very terrifying. Gnome Child icon. And then we get an outfits, which I guess I don't have the full outfit because my inventory was full, but um, that's pretty cool. I guess that's what the full outfit looks like. That's so creepy. Why is that even creepier on the female character model? Oh, look at this place. This is so cool. This is like all the original uh, models for a bunch of different NPCs. So we got dragons, trolls, orcs. Oh, lizard men. They used to be like a real creature back in the early days of RuneScape. And then they brought them back in the old school. Now we have like lizard men and the shamans and stuff. And there's the lesser demons. I have the old demon mask and lesser demon mask, which I got both of those from one master clue. I could twin with them. And then scorpions, king scorpion. Oh, I just looked it up. Apparently these three people are the same ones um, that are like in the audience when you have the mime random event. These are the three people. And supposedly they may represent Sarah, Guthix, and Zamrak. I mean, Guthix. Hey, what's up girl? Oh my, look at those badonkadongs. Holy crap, dude. All right, I see where the party's at. <laughs> oh, they have sleeping bags like from RuneScape Classic. Let's see, it restores 10% run here though. Ah, it felt easier than it did in the old days. Probably because we didn't have to type a CAPTCHA this time. I love this place, man. This is probably one of my new favorite places in the game. Chuck was the guy in RuneScape Classic who would turn items into certs, um, which is what banknotes are nowadays, except I think weren't certs like you can only make five, like it was just always five as one cert or something. I played Classic back in 05 and 06 for a bit, but I don't really remember it too well. I don't even know if certs were in the game at that point, actually. But um, And then there's also... 
Pious Pete here. It was uh, one of the old random events. When you examine the exit portal, it says, takes you back to the future in a sense. And I love this game, dude. Like, as toxic as RuneScape can be, there's so many positives about this game that outweigh the negatives. I mean, that's why we all keep coming back to it every day, right? And apparently with this gnome child icon from the event, we can use it in the icon space in the altar room here to build the gnome child icon. Oh. Oh. Ah, perfect. It's literally best in slot. What, is it? what happens if you read it? Oh. Very cool. I wish we could make the Western Banner into the Gnome Child 1 permanently, or at least make the Gnome Child 1 the Tier 4, but that's a different discussion for a different video. Hello demons! I'm back! I'm you now! I'm one of you! Please accept me! And now, I'm you from the future. Now, I'm you again. This is more of me just flexing my items, but, you know, I really like this place a lot, and I hope in the future they expand on it and, like, make it even bigger or something, or more floors or something, and add even more classic stuff in here. This is really cool. It's like a combination of learning about the history, because if you come here, there's probably a good chance you're gonna, like, learn- wait, can you cross the barrier? Oh, you can actually go in here. Oh, um, I like how it's kind of combined with memes as well, though. It's perfect, man. This place is great. Oh, wait, you can attack them, too. Oh, wait, they can actually damage you back, so, like, you could theoretically die here. <laughs> Imagine dying here on a hardcore. No loot. Sad. When there's, like, a really rare chance of getting some, like, really cool drop, like, I don't know, or even something like a party hat or something. Who knows? I kind of want to go up here and try fighting the dragons, but I feel like they'll use dragon fire on me and just destroy me. Wait, so what if we attack KBD? Oh! oh. <laughs> okay, okay. It kind of reminds me of the old school museum. All this stuff down here is so cool. If there's ever a, a, a new school, old school, or something, they could put this in the new school, old school game. I don't know what I'm saying. Now there's one last thing we have to take care of today before we end the video, and that is being able to wear the quest cape again because I can't do it. There's a new quest added during the league, so I haven't done it since then because I just got that to the account the other day, uh, and it's called getting head or getting getting ahead. You know what I'm saying, boys. Wait, I can't even put it back in the cape rack to make some more inventory space for now. I actually have to have all the quests done in order to store it. This has been the goal of the account since the very beginning. After over a year and a half of playing it, we have finally achieved the quest cape on the ultimate Iron Man. Next video, it's finally going to be about time to use up these crystal shards. I'll see you then.